Hello everybody, today I've got a pair of Allen Edmonds Leedens woven leather shoes and uh, they were sort of thrifted. Um, I'm gonna clean these up uh, like I usually do with a high mirror shine. I don't know if I've got enough pairs to call this an extravaganza, but I'm gonna show you a few other styles of woven leather shoes. And then I'm gonna also show you how to pair them with a few different outfits, all right? So let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordovan. Can you tell the difference? Now here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. Here it goes. Here they are completely finished up. So first of all, let me show you what I've got here. This is a pair of Allen Edmonds Leedens. And uh, you can see here on the insole there, it's a little bit worn off. Um, I'm gonna try to get it there. But this model is a Leiden um, and it's L-E-I-D-E-N. And you can't really see the logo in there very well, but if you look at the outsole here, and uh, I call that the 19, Sorry, it's upside down. I call that the 1922 badge. So when you see that 1922 badge and the word Allen Edmonds inline, where the A and the E are capital letters, they started to do this, I believe, in 2017. Now, in the fall of 2018, they changed the Allen Edmonds logo to what I would call the, I call this the military font. So I believe that makes these shoes produced somewhere in the range of 2017 to 2018, I believe, from that. Now, you can see they're not in bad shape at all, right? And of course, they're curled because, you know, people almost never use shoe trees in them. But the leather itself, uh, you know, some wrinkling, but I don't see any cracking on them. You know, of course, they need to be polished. They don't really look like they've, you know, been polished. You know, just a little bit of wear on them there. You can see the corner of the heel that gets worn. It's not bad. There's my dog, Riley. That's making all the noise with the chain. Sorry, Riley, we're going. Tips of the toes have some wear on them, worn through the threads a little bit there. But overall, I think the leathers feels pretty solid. And uh, these were thrifted for $38. Not a, how do I say this? It's not a bargain from the standpoint of if you wanted to resell a shoe. But if you wanted to buy this shoe, a shoe this nice doesn't really show up that, uh, that often at a thrift store or even on eBay. So as far as if you were going to uh, you know, own a shoe, yeah, I think it's a huge bargain. Now, some of you may be very familiar with the shoe terminology. Some of you may not. So one other thing I want to show you here real quick is this style of shoe. Uh, other than being a woven leather shoe, this is a derby, okay? Do you see how these flaps are open? Okay, that's a derby style of shoe compared to an Oxford. Now, can you see the Oxford? The front of the shoe is closed. This is a closed lacing system, okay? And this is an Oxford. This is a little more formal. Now, when we're talking about a woven leather shoe, we're not really talking, you know, a formal shoe anyway, okay? Now, let me show you something else. Do you see this wing tip? This design here is called the wing tip, the whoosh, right? The whoosh and it comes down and stops here. That's your standard wing tip, okay? Compared to, this one is also a derby, okay? But you see, this is a long wing. You see how the wing, the wing tip goes all the way to the back of the shoe, that makes it a long wing. So this would be a long wing derby, and this is kind of unique. I, I love this design, just because you've got a little bit of contrast. You see the, the woven leather is a little bit darker here. This is a little bit lighter. You know, it's not a real obvious contrast you know, this is something that I think is just an elegant way to get attention without screaming for it, you know, you know, like unlike a spectator, which is kind of a different, you know, whole different genre um, where this might be like white, you know, and black or white and brown. Um, I just love this design. I think it's it's awesome. You see, it's got some broguing here going across. And of course, it's got a medallion on the cap toe. OK, and I'll compare that here too. Compare that to this other design here. So this is the Shreveport. Um, you can see there. So the design of this shoe is called the Allen Edmonds Shreveport. And this one, you can see, it's a little different. First of all, I want you to notice the last shape. What do I mean by the last? Last is the form on which the shoe is made. Now this shoe is an 11 and a half triple E. This one is a 10 D. Um, so it's a difference there. But um, if you notice the way the shoe is shaped, this shoe is a much longer last. Can you see that? And then the toe shape, this one is very almond shaped. And this one is a little bit of a chisel point, right? So that does create a difference in obviously the way the shoe looks. This one has no medallion on the cap toe. Okay, I got a decent spit shine on there. It's not easy as, as easy to get it show up on a you know light walnut colored shoe. And then you also see the broguing across there. It's got very similar detailing around here. 
okay? And um, if you know Alan Edmonds shoes, you know that the standard shoes do not come with a leather rubber combo heel. So I put those on myself and they're holding up pretty well. It's almost time to, almost time to, it's actually about time to change them. But anyway, uh, another nice design there. And it's just uh, another, you can see a key difference between these things is the color. Um, the brown, I really think these woven shoes look much better in shades of brown. And if you can see the tan, the walnut color even lets you see more detail in the leather. I really think the darker the leather color is, the more of the detail of the leather itself it hides, you know? So this walnut color is pretty fascinating to me. Um, uh, it, it stands out a little more, you know, it makes more of a contrast, okay? Like if you're wearing dark, uh, you know, maybe like, a, you know, like I'm wearing right now is like a dark colored jean, okay? So if you can imagine, you know, this is like a, almost a black jean, you know, that creates more of a contrast than this does. You know, if that gives you some idea of how to pair things. So it just gives you some variety in your wardrobe. Now, here's another pair. This pair of shoes um, is actually by a brand. I found two of these pairs before, uh, Principe. And uh, these shoes are actually Blake stitched. And you can see there, right? It says, uh, right? Uh, it actually says, what does it say? Handcrafted. I think it says, oh, it's upside down. Uh, handcrafted, and then under that I covered it with the, to, you know, the Goodyear protective hassle, but can, handcrafted in Spain. These are Spanish shoe, and, uh, you know, this one you can see there is actually the size is a 12W for wide. Uh, this is a, another little bit of a different design. Now, you see it's got a little bit different toe last shape. I'll compare it to the Allen Edmonds. It's got that same shorter, you know, or standard length design, but you can see the Principe has got a slight uh cornering like a it's not quite as rounded it's got a little bit more of a squared off shape right and obviously it's black you can see here this is kind of neat though it's like a i don't know what you call this but it looks the detail appears as if it's like a leather woven strap and it's raised and i think that's kind of neat it's kind of beautiful right see some double stitching and then the reinforcement stitch around there got a decent spit shine on that right okay and I like the toe caps on the woven leather shoe, so I can still get that spit shine that I like, you know. And then I'm, I just think this area is too vulnerable to, you know, have woven leather. It becomes a little more difficult to wear the shoes out, you know, when you don't have that, right? So, Principe, I think the full name of the company is Principe di Firenze. I could be wrong about that. Um, but I found these uh, online, um, and I'll show you another pair of uh, Principe shoes. Very, very similar to these. It's actually the same last shape. It's the exact same shoe design, just in a brown, um, you know, kind of a medium brown. I just think the brown color is more beautiful than the black color. So uh, let me show you a couple other designs here. Now, this one is another pair of uh, woven leather shoes, but these are by Meslon. And these Meslons are a pair that I found at a thrift store. They're actually for a friend. And, uh, you know, now you can tell this is an Oxford. You see the closed lacing system. Uh, it's an Oxford, which technically makes it a little more formal. But I think what we're getting here is more degrees of formality of more informal shoes, if that makes sense. So I guess the way I would put it is this woven leather Oxford. I would wear this with a suit on the right condition. So let me explain that. So the woven leather Oxford, I think, could go with the suit. If you're going out, awesome, great, do it. Um, you know, if this is going to be like a fairly you know, informal, you know, business meeting. Like, for example, we have a lot of millennials and younger people at our office, you know, even though we're financial services, like for the training night where it's just us, wear whatever you want, you know what I mean? As long as you look appropriate. I think that would be fine. If you're a guest at a wedding, go for it. In the wedding party, probably not. Interview, I'd say no, that'd be too bold. You know, so it kind of depends. You know, you live in New York, you know, or, um, you know, especially if you're overseas, like in England or something like that, and I think the rules are going to be much stricter, but you obviously have to use your judgment here where we we live in the Midwest U.S. in Ohio. It's so, the, the dress code is so awful, you know, just to even wearing the fact that you have, uh, you know, a pair of lace-up Oxfords with a suit, I think puts you ahead of 90% of the other people, you know, so um, let me show you one last pair here. And this is a very similar kind of shoe, but black woven leather. You can see it's also an Oxford. These are also by Meslon. Um, it's just a, I, I just think the woven leather shoe is an amazing way to bring some attention to yourself, you know, without looking like you're really screaming for it. 
And also here, I'm gonna show you a pair of Johnston and Murphy loafers. Now you see here, the weave on these is very wide. It gives it a very different, unique uh, look to it. Also, it's gonna be a little more durable, you know, because the weave is at the front of the shoe. Um, I believe I believe these soles actually were Blake stitched. Uh, they are blind stitched, but anyway, um, you know, it's kind of a unique style. You see the lacing on the sides, just another gorgeous shoe. This is a great shoe to wear with like, you know, chinos, khakis, uh, if you go to a party or something like that, you know, very, I would say consider this, uh, you know, more of the casual, casual end of the range as far as the style goes. I would call this a three season shoe. So, you know, like here in Ohio, we have, you know, winter with snow, you know, sometimes a foot of snow in the winter. So I would call this a three season shoe. You know, I would label it as a spring, summer and fall shoe. And, um, you know, the woven leather, by the way, it does not it's not open. In other words, it doesn't like ventilate the shoe. I haven't found any real temperature difference. It's not like when I wear these, my, my feet feel any cooler. Um, I also would keep these out of the wet because obviously the this uh, leather is just going to let water in easier. And, you know, so I keep these definitely out of the snow, but I don't wear these when, you know, there's standing water on the ground either. So I would consider adding them to your wardrobe. I don't think a woven leather shoe is going to be your like second shoe, you know, so for uh, uh, most people would agree if you have no dress shoes, the first one should be a black cap toe Oxford. I'll show you that. So most, uh, you know, shoe people agree that your first dress shoe is going to be something like this, you know, the cap toe a black cap toe Oxford. You see the closed lacing system. Something like this would be your first dress shoe. And then uh, if you really like Oxfords, you know, next you'd go for something brown, like a quarter brogue. You see it's got broguing across here and the brown color makes it a little less formal. And I think it's just prettier. Um, you know, so then uh, I would say this is probably going to be your, you know, fourth or fifth shoe, something like that. It's pretty memorable, so you're probably not going to wear it every day. And again, you're going to want to keep it out of certain kinds of, of uh, um, you know, uh, certain kinds of weather. So probably your third, fourth shoe are going to be some kind of loafer, derbies and things like that. So, you know, these uh, uh, woven leather shoes are probably more likely when you really start to establish your wardrobe and you really want to fan out. You really want to start to, you know, um, exploring your style and personality with them, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and get to the cleanup of the lead -ins. I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use saddle soap on them and then I'm going to uh, condition them with, I'm not sure which one yet, either the Saphir uh, Renovateur and or the Tanner's Blend from Ashland Leather Company. Uh, then I'm going to polish them up with some cream polish, uh, mirror shine on the toes and uh, they should hopefully look new. All right, so let's go. Okay, now the very first thing, even before actually cleaning them up, uh, I like this style shoe tree because you can see here it's adjustable, you know, I love these for cobbling. All I did here was I took a piece of pine block, you know, gave it a little bit of an arc on both sides this is from a two by four. Um, and, uh, you know, that well, all this did was it gave a, um, just basically made the shoe tree a little larger is all it did. Okay. So here's my saddle soap and I've got a whole nother video on this. You just got a little bit of warm water in the lid and, uh, you know, fill it up a couple times to, um, you know, basically to keep the lid warm. It's, it's almost out. I really need to get some more and you know, there's different ways to do this. I mean, I may, I, this is the way I've done it for years and I'm, you know, I have read the directions on the can and, you know, a couple people have said that they were professionals reamed me say, yeah, use too much water, whatever, you know? Like I guess we're not saving the planet here. So, but the point is, um, I think I need more than that. You do want to get a good lather going on the shoe though. And yes, does it introduce a little moisture into the shoe? Yes, but is it going to hurt it? No. Uh, I'm going to take the laces out first. By the way, if it ever comes up in trivia, this little end on the end of the shoelace is called an aglet. A-G-L-E-T, so that'll make it really popular with the ladies guys if you remember that, okay? So here we go, got the saddle soap. Like I said, it should create a nice lather and you wanna get down into that welt.
Now, you can see it darkened it up a little bit. And by the way, do you see that there? There was a little bit of salt standing on there and you can actually see a tiny bit of the damage the way it puffs up a little bit. Um, it, that's what happens when you get salt water in a leather shoe. So, you know, wear galoshes. That's why I say do not wear these in the winter weather where you get the salt. I don't know if you know this. If you don't live in a cold climate, they put salt, sodium chloride, potassium chloride, different versions of salt on the pavement, uh, you know, to melt the snow. And it just, it's horrible for the leather. But anyway, um, that will lighten back up a little bit as the water comes up. But you see there is still some soap left in the, uh, the ridges there. I'll show you what to do with that. So I keep a, you know, a separate little brush, different from the one I usually shine the shoes with, and kind of do a circular motion. Sometimes you could pat in there to try and get that stuff out, but you want to get that stuff out of the holes. Okay, that's good. That'll get it all out. And you can go in the welt as well. Okay, time for some conditioning. This is Tanner's Blend, uh, leather cleaner and conditioner from Ashland Leather Company. And this is uh, um, primarily uh, lanolin, okay? Lanolin comes from sheep, and I've got an old old cloth that, you know, oh yes, yeah, dirty, but this is, you know, perfect for this. This is all I use it for. So it's probably, I don't know if you need to shake it up or not, but I usually do. I think it's most critical to nourish the shoe here and here. That's where, and then in the eye stays where there's stress from the laces, but I think that's where it's gonna crack first from my experience. Now this part here, I'm gonna use it very sparingly. Cause again, I don't wanna clog up the weaves. You know, I do think they need to be nourished as well. And I think sometimes it helps to go kind of both ways, you know, like if you're going 45 this way, go 45 that way. If you're going that way, go that way. You know, in other words, make sure you just go both ways. Get everything out of the, the weeds. Okay. Shoes have had, um, I don't know, about 15 minutes here. Uh, something like that, maybe a little longer to kind of like air out or whatever. So what I'm going to use on these is the Sapphire uh, Medal Dior. This is the softer cream polish and this color is the number 37 medium brown and I think it's going to go perfectly with these shoes and by the way you don't have to worry too much about having the exact right color um, you know this stuff isn't going to change the color of a shoe if you use a darker one yeah it'll tint it darker but it's not going to significantly you know from my experience it's not going to significantly change the color of the shoe anyway So they've had a few minutes to set up, uh, basically just let the left shoe sit while I put polish on the right shoe. And this is the part that I really like. Nice horsehair brush. Okay. Ah.
And again on the weaves, I would go both ways, you know, 90 degrees to each other. So you're trying to get all the product out from in between the weaves. And these shoes being that they're fairly new, the leather's in good condition. There was not a lot of junk on them, by the way. If there was a lot of le uh, junk on the leather, uh, I would have stripped them off with this, but I believe it was totally unnecessary, so I didn't. And I think I just after that one good heavy coat, I'm gonna stop, uh, because like I said, they're looking pretty good. All right, so next, I'm going to, I might use a combination, but I'm definitely gonna use a mirror gloss on the toes. The difference is this one is neutral, this one is black. Right. I may use a little bit of the black if I feel like adding a little bit of darkening. You know, I am going to add a little bit of black. I don't know if you can tell, but the tip of the toe is just barely darker, and I'm going to enhance that a little bit uh, with the black. So for the mirror gloss, other than the uh, polish, you need water. Now, by the way, um, uh, this Saphir Medal Dior mirror gloss is harder. This is only for the hard areas. Like I'm going to fade it back and I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to fade it back and I'm not going to put it much past this area where the toe flexes because it will, you know, it'll, it, it's going to create a mirror shine, like a spit shine. But if you put it, uh, try to mirror shine back here, it flexes the part where the shoe flexes, it'll crack off. Okay. And again, this is black. It's not going to make it black. It's just going to tint it darker. It takes quite a bit to... It takes quite a few layers of this stuff to actually turn anything black. You know, in other words, it's like putting window tint on a window, you know, or on a paint job. It doesn't turn the car black. It just tints it. And I'm going to let that set up. I'm going to do the other shoe. Notice the, uh, the pores in the leather and watch how they fill up and cover up with wax as they go through this. I believe it helps cure it. You see there, you can already start to see a shine. You see that? Older shoes that have had a little bit of polish on them are much easier to get a mirror shine on than brand new leather. I'll go one more. On the tip of the toe with the black. Go to the right shoe, drop the water with the ring finger. kind of a feel thing you put the wax on there and the drop of water you'll feel it reduce the friction you'll feel the wax start to smooth out and it's like you can feel the shine coming on I don't know if that makes sense so I don't contaminate the wax.
Can you hear it? I don't know if you can hear that. Just listen to the sound. It sounds rough. It sounds like I'm scratching. That's because right now the, the pores on the leather are sticking up. And that's that really, in that area, that was the first layer of wax. So you can't feel, obviously, through YouTube what I'm feeling. So I'm trying to convey the feeling through sound and sight. Can you hear the scrubbing sound? There's a lot of drag when I'm putting this on right now. Can you hear the difference when I get onto the toe that's smoother? There's still some drag because I'm loading up polish. Okay, so back to the left one here. Again, drop of water, boom. Now listen. I don't know if you can tell by the sound. Now a little more wax. It's got a much smoother feel to it now. So I got that one layer essentially smoothed out. And what I'm really doing now is globbing on, not globbing, but I'm applying another layer. Do you see now it's hazy again? I'm gonna let that set up. And I go back to the right shoe. Drop the water. Boom, boom. And as I do this, I'm losing the wax on the rag. So right now I'm just polishing what is on the shoe. Now I'm gonna get more on the rag. As you start to build up more layers, you'll get to the point where you may not need to add water. You'll see it polish out to a shine without any water. Seems like you need more drops of water in the early stages of building up the mirror shine. There, I can feel a drag. I'm gonna load it up here. Let that kind of uh, set up. I go back to this one. Here's another thing that I'm doing. I'm looking at the glare and I'm looking at how clear the reflection is. And that's how you can tell where some areas need more wax. Watching the reflection. here really needs a lot more wax. It's not coming up to a shine yet. And the wax, the rag is pretty loaded right now from that glob of wax. Globbed it on there and I'm gonna let that set up. Catching the drift of this. Water so that it glides over. It's starting to come up. It's starting. Do you see it's starting to really fill in those pores? up there right in here it's decent but can you see it's like ugh, I'm frustrated it's not quite filled in do you see those little tiny 
spots that aren't glossy yet. It's almost there. Here's a little tip. You see how right there I've got a glob of wax in one of the brogue holes? Take a toothpick. Carefully. The shine is coming up. It's not perfect. It's really frustrating to be honest. I'm almost there. Okay, so here are the lead-ins all finished up. Mirror shine is not perfect. I'd give myself, I guess, an A minus on that. But I'm gonna stop. I gotta draw the line somewhere. I did polish up the edges of the heels and soles using some brown brown uh, wax polish. Just didn't do it on camera. Don't they look pretty good though? I don't. Love the style of shoe. And as promised, here's a few looks that you can combine these with. So what I'm wearing here now is just a pair of uh, nice, I would say, uh, dressier jeans, the uh, Shreveport's and Walnut, with a, just a nice low-rise turtleneck uh, long sleeve shirt. And then you can even pair it with a sport coat here, something the same earth tones. And see how nice that looks, you know? And this is something you could just wear, uh, you know, anywhere, you know, just, uh, you know, casual. Some places this is even business appropriate, um, you know. Great, great combination in my book. So especially here for the fall weather we've got. Now, next one here is with the same dressy jeans, but now I've got a, uh, you know, a nice dress shirt on. And, uh, uh, and I've got a Joseph A. Banks uh, sport coat. It's got kind of like a, a light a herringbone pattern on it. And, you know, so it's blue with the black woven leather belt and the black Principe woven leather shoes. Next, uh, Brooks Brothers. Uh, suit. This is actually like a gray with a little bit of hint of a uh, purple pinstriping in it. Uh, the walnut colored Allen Edmonds belt with a walnut uh, Allen Edmonds shoes and a Brooks Brothers dress shirt, Oxford collar, and no tie. Okay. And that's, uh, like I said, just a few different combinations you can put together. All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. If you'd like to see some of my other videos, please go to my page and check them out. Also, feel free to subscribe and hit that like button if you liked what you saw. All right. Thank you, everybody. God bless. I hope you uh, have an amazing day. Thank you.